Hey church, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're so grateful to have you with us. We want to encourage you to engage by interacting in our comment section. Give us a like and say hey to some people that you haven't seen in a while. If you're with us for the first time, you can go ahead and scan the QR code that's on the screen to see what your next steps could be. So thank you for joining us and have a great service. As I reflect, I found perspective. They're in the best and worst days of my life. You were always on my side. You're in the pain, you're in the promise, and on the days of
Hey church, we've got another great week coming up and here's what we've got lined up just for you. Join us every day at four o'clock as we lift up our nation in prayer for seven minutes a day, seven days a week on Facebook and Instagram Live. Don't forget, we have devotions every Tuesday and Thursday morning at 9 a.m. on Facebook and Instagram Live. Coffee with Chez is on Wednesday mornings at 9.30 a.m. on Facebook and Instagram Live. Midweek Meetup is on Wednesday evenings at 8 p.m. on Facebook and Instagram Live. Catch the youth service on Saturdays at 7 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook Live. If you'd like to have some fun and a good laugh, join in the Zoom Youth After Party at 7.45. For more information, email brandon at hischurch.co.za. Winter warmth. Help us collect blankets and socks for those in need. Please contact your location pastor for the drop of points and details. If you do not have any social media accounts but would still like to be part of our weekly meetings, we have you covered. Simply go to hischurch.co.za forward slash social to participate in our meetings as well as view videos and posts. And don't forget to join us 10 minutes before the service every Sunday morning where you can connect over coffee with your location pastors live on Facebook. So for today's offering, I'd like to share a passage from Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. It says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and when thieves do not break in and steal. And church, the encouragement in the scripture is that many times when we give, we feel like we're giving what we're giving up without any return. And the promise in this word is that when we're faithful to give, when we're faithful to be generous in reflecting who God is, we're actually accumulating or storing up something in heaven. And so know that when you give today, there's an eternal purpose behind what you give. And what you give has an impact. You're not giving it up, but you're giving into the kingdom of God. And so I want to encourage you as we go into the word this morning to lean in and be ready to receive all that God wants to say to you today. Enjoy. Good morning, His Church, Simon, Cheslin, the leadership team, and all brothers and sisters there. It's so great to be able to connect with you. You know, the Bible says that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And and we're just so thankful that love is not uh, dependent on borders, that there are no borders. And we just want to just say how much we love you and we miss you and we wish we could be with you. Uh, we pray for you every day and we thank God for you and we know that God is is uh, continuing to work in your lives. So we just are so thankful. We've been doing very well here in America. Uh, as far as our situation here, Siggy and I, we've been able to hike. You know, hiking's a big part of our life and to get out in nature and that. It's, it's really been important for us to get out and and also we've been praying for different situations you know the situation in america there's and not only america but all over the world there's such a such a, a revolution taking place and we just know that we just know that god has the answers and we're just trusting god and praying and and believing god and uh, we just thank god that he is with us every day and his presence goes with us and so we just want to encourage you keep walking no matter what the outside looks like keep walking keep believing keep trusting god because he has the last say god is the one who is in control of history and and i'm so thankful that we have an inheritance that doesn't depend on what men can say and do to us but we have an eternal uh heritage that and uh inheritance that uh, no man can take so god bless you this morning we're we're so uh, excited and siggy's coming to bring the word that god put on her heart praise god so good to be able to keep in contact with each other and to know even so we know in the spirit that we connected but that we can hear from each other you know, South Africa is definitely our second home, and sometimes it feels even like it's our first home. Now, since we got home, I have to say it was a real shock to our system. Not so much the coronavirus, I mean, these are the things you deal with. But when these things happened with George Floyd in Minneapolis, 
and these riots are starting and they have never even stopped yet. I felt a real impact in my heart in, in, in what is God doing because I realized that all these things I have preached and all the things I have seen years ago, it's truly going to come to pass. And that's the last thing any here in America, hundreds and thousands of people who come from socialist countries like Cuba and uh, uh, all the Eastern countries. And you can see anybody who lived in socialism um, will never embrace it. And I said to David many times, I said, I can't believe it that I actually going to see what they have taught us in school. Now, remember, I told many times, you know, all my stories in, in uh, Durban in particular, and I've many times told in these 12 years of school or whatever, how long we've been in, in, in that school, how they said they're going to conquer South, Af uh, South Africa, conquer America. And I realize and recognize when you see the government or the ones who are running against Trump now, it's not the Democrats, it's actually a communistic agenda. And I'm sure if you keep up with the politics that you realize what's happening now, you know if, uh, it, if, it, if it would happen and we believe it won't happen because the Lord has spoken that he has a man for such a time as this for our country and for the world. And we know that we as church have to find our place in this day in these upheavals. And I you know I've listened to many voices and we listen to what prophets say and what people say in these days as we are shut up and as we are walking a walk, we, I have never walked even so. I served the Lord 54 years and we have gone to many, many different seasons. This is a season we all go together which will be known as something which the Lord is birthing something in us and through us. Now, I asked the Lord, I said, what should I say in these days? I feel almost like Zachariah, that I'm dumb, that I don't have the ability to speak, or like Ezekiel, where the Lord spoke to his wife, or I spoke to him as his wife died, and he said to him, you're not going to mourn, you don't show your feelings of what I'm doing in you and through you. You're not point, you're putting on these things, morning clothes, because I want the people or Israel learn what they're going to have to go through. And I ask the Lord, as sometimes I can feel it physical, the fight of the enemy on our bodies, and we can feel the atmosphere of the enemy and you know that there is a huge silent majority in South Africa in South Africa you can see where I am in America where they don't say anything right now because it's so divisive right now if you would have a Trump sign on your car you can guarantee that you would not your car would not be whole you would have scratches on etc and so i know that in these days god is doing a work like we have never seen before to in many many levels now i want just to show i i uh, show a scripture which i believe the lord just spoken to me in my heart in Psalm 37, verse 18 and 19, it says, The Lord knows the days of the blameless or upright, and their inheritance will be forever. They will not be ashamed in a time of evil, and in a day of famine they will have abundance. You know, when you look at in the times and in seasons as you go through your life, it's easy when you go to evil times that evil will affect you, that evil it can affect your thinking, can affect your emotion, and can affect your action. And I think the Lord speaks here how he is going to preserve a generation who is blameless in the time of evil. Now, he said, you will not be ashamed. You know, many times when I think back, in, in times of want, you can, even so you're Christian, you can do things through your emotional distress, because this is what shame means. 
uh, that you are to the point of despair, that you are reacting the same way as a sinner acts. And the Lord says he's going to have a generation. Even so, we are going to the times of evil and to the times of despair. We will not be ashamed of the things we're going to do and the things we're going to decide. Now, I, you know, every generation, I think, as I look to the different generations and different times we have flown, when I think in the 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s, there were things standing out in the generation. God revealed and God made the crooked way straight. And I think for many years, what God has done, he has given us exploits in the law. How many times we, I myself have preached that it means to fulfill our purpose. And you know, the Lord has given us great adventures, all of us, where we experience God's purpose, where we experience this, uh, just his fullness in our life. And yet, it's, I think there comes a time where we have to bring something forth, like diamonds. Diamonds are not just fulfilled because they have a purpose to shine on the finger. Diamonds comes to pressures in life. And as the pressures come, that diamond is formed to times and seasons to become sparkling and shiny. And I think this is what God wants to do. I think in those days, and, and, and I want to read the scripture because this is uh, in Chronicle 12, 32, it says, the sons of Issachar, who had understanding of times, to know what Israel are to do. And I realized uh, how when Esther came to take the place of Astai, how the king depended on men who understood the time because whilst I did something which did not fit into her times, what did she do? She refused to call to show her beauty. They called to come to show her beauty. And as she refused to show her beauty, you can read that the king did not just decide himself what to do that he had men who knew the times, what to do with the times. And because of it, he could, he, Esther fulfilled the place of what God did. And I think in these days, I think back in my life, we had to know what to do in the times when the, we, the Lord called us, in the, when we were just in the 20s, to smuggle Bibles into the Soviet Union because it was a, we have to understood the time. You could not do it in the 90s. You could no longer do it in the year 2000. We did not know that then, that the wall of Berlin would fall. We did not understand then that it was a time and a season. We had to carry the burden, literally, the burdens in our heart, the burdens in our body, as we put the Bibles and as we put them into our car, because that was a time to sow the seed in the generation to create voices and courage so that God could use that to break down the yoke of the Soviet Union and to build the church in this day. And I think as I look at now, there's many voices here in America, great churches, and you can drive along the streets, you see all the, you know, it's the same in South Africa, all the churches are shut, and some of them are looked, especially as the corona started, some of the mega churches, I wanted to hear a new message, I wanted to hear something, and all they did is show the old messages from ye from before the corona, where we had no crisis, where we were not locked up, and I looked for that fresh voice. And I think as the Lord is calling Issachar, a new generation of Issachars, of donkeys, who know, and let me read it again to you, what it says about the sons of Issachar. The sons of Issachar who had understanding of times to know what Israel 
are to do. And I, you know, as uh, you look around and you, it's so divisive, you can't hardly say anything. The socialists and communists are controlling the universities, they're controlling the schools. And I just saw the other day a young girl standing at the street and uh, she had a sign and it did not say black life matters. It says all life matters. And as she took that sign and she put it up in the air, these other kids came and they start dragging the sign out of her hand and they, they start uh, trying to beat her or whatever. And I realized that in these days when, when you stand for the truth and for the power, you cannot just say it because you make exploits for the Lord. You have to carry the burden. And I thank the Lord that the Lord is raising up voices uh, in, in America, young people who are only born in the year 2000, maybe, or even uh, not even 20 years old. Some of them are maybe 30 or 25 years old. And they are realizing that they we need to hear something which is fresh, coming like an oil of living water out of their lives. And I think about how Isaac, I mean, who wants to be a donkey? You can dream about being a lion and even a wolf, but who wants to be a donkey, just a common, common burden bearer to carry the burden of others. A donkey doesn't carry his own burden. He has to carry burdens are put up on them. He carries them. And because he carries them, that's why the Lord speaks of Issachar. He's lying between his disturbed burden. And he saw that his rest was good. And you know, I look at about donkeys and I looked it up and you can actually make a study about donkeys, how God takes some donkeys to stand out in a time and in a season to carry the burden and to carry what the Lord has. Now, the first donkey you saw who carried the burden was a donkey Abraham took, and he carried the wood. He put it under his back, the most journey to uh, bring the sacrifice of Isaac. And then I want to talk about a little bit about a donkey who carried uh, in, um, what well, scripture is it now, in First King 19, Oh, no, not First King 19, no, something like uh, in First King, where, no, in Numbers, Numbers, where the Lord speaks to, to Billy, Billiam, and, or the Israel, the king of Moab comes to Billiam, and he comes to Billiam, and he's afraid, the king of Moab is afraid of Israel, because Israel is strong and mighty, and it conquers the nation and conquers the victory uh, and make, brings victory. And here he comes to Bela, comes to Balaam. He's a famous soothsayer, or some even said he is a prophet who went astray. And he comes to him and he's supposed to curse Israel, speak against Israel. And this is what happens right now. The warfare is not with guns. The warfare right now we do is people who speak against the church, speak against liberty, speak against God's love, speaks about the power of the word. Right now, even a lot of people are killed as, as, as things are happening in the big cities of America. But the defeat of the people in their emotions and in their life has nothing to do with guns, has to do with words, with the power of the word. And this is what ba Balak wants Biliam to do, to speak against Israel, to restrict Israel from what they're going to do in their life. And here you see the first donkey care, being carried, carries that prophet. Now you have to realize these days that the church, the devil <coughs> is not going to kill the church. The devil wants to neutralize ministries and neutralize the church that we function, but we have no power. And when the devil comes to neutralize, that's what 
what happens to Samson. The Philistines did not want to kill Samson. They wanted to neutralize Samson to use them for their own purpose, to make fun of them, to use them. And that's what the devil wants to do with the church today. He doesn't care if we have meetings. He wants to neutralize us so that we're confused and we don't know which way we go and what we do. And you see what happens. It says that the angel stood in a narrow pass. He had the donkey had no way to go. He had to turn away. William could not see the angel, but the donkey saw the angel because he was a burden bearer. And as he saw the angel standing in a narrow way, he turned around and he, he, he turned away. And then it says in verse 31 in Numbers 22, then the Lord opened the eyes to for the prophet, and he saw the angel. And, and then after the donkey saw the angel, imagine that, the Lord opened the donkey's mouth, and he says that to the prophet or to the soothsayer. <clears throat> Why have you struck your donkey and come as an adversary because your way was contrary to me? I saw and turned aside from me. If she, the angel says that to the, to the prophet or to the soothsayer, she said, why have you struck your donkey? <clears throat> I come as an adversary because your way was contrary to me. Now, but the donkey, he carried a soothsayer and he carried him to fulfill his purpose and destiny. But the ministry of that soothsayer was contrary to that what the Lord wanted to do. He said, he saw and turned aside from me. He said this, if you did not, if he did not turn away, I would kill you and let the donkey live. And I realized, I mean, when you think of ministries, uh, ministry is not just to, to make money, we you know all that. Ministry is to carry a burden, and sometimes <coughs> he, that donkey carried a burden, but that donkey could not save that prophet. And I believe today, when you look at these donkeys, I may mean, thinking of another donkey too, in, in the, and that's why I got it mixed up with the scriptures almost there. It, and it's about the guy who is in Jerobeam, in First King 19, he prophesied, and the prophet's supposed to come, and he has a mighty revival, and he speaks to the king, and the king he <coughs> tries to arrest him, and his hands withered, and he prophesied of Hosea would be born. And um, the Lord speaks to the prophet, and he says, don't turn left or right, don't take the favor of the king, just move on. Just move and don't go the same way. And I think to myself, that's a second or third donkey which the Lord used to understand the times. And here the donkey was carrying actually that prophet, that young prophet, betrayed by an old prophet who wanted to just be in the limelight, betrayed by that old prophet. That donkey stood there. And he experienced the death of the prophet. And the lion didn't tear him. And he stood there and he had to carry the corpse of the prophet to, the, to his grave. And I believe today when we see these things die, to understand the times, I think we go into tremendous, tremendous changes in every level of our life, the main key thing is that we understand the times because these times we're never going to relive. We're never going to understand what the Lord wants to do in our life unless we become burden bearers, unless the burden can come and bring the pressure in our life. Now, what does the Lord say? Too much tribulation, too much pressure of flesh. 
thou shalt enter the kingdom, thou shalt come into the realm of that that the Lord has. And then remember, there's another donkey in Matthew 21. He says, tell the daughter of Zion, the king is coming, sitting on a donkey. And remember, the donkey brought Jesus into Jerusalem, an unbroken donkey, a donkey who was tied there because only as you become a donkey and you carry the burden of his glory and the burden of his anointing in your life, can you understand the times and the seasons in our life? And I believe it's a new season for the Church of Jesus Christ this day. With you and I, it's not just if I do my exploits and my adventures, you know. I, I come before the Lord and I know our times and our seasons. It's, it's different than many of you because we're all in different seasons and our age, in our ministry, in our ways. But it's a time in this season. doesn't matter how old we are. We're living it together, young, old men, women, children in that time, where we have to find out a source and a power which is beyond our imagination or understanding. In Romans 12, 12, it says, Rejoice in hope, patient in tribulation, devoted in prayer. Rejoice in hope. And that is what, what the seasons and the time to rejoice in hope. When you carry the burdens, it says the donkey, Issachar, knows the times. And, they, you know, and he knows as he carries the burden, he lies between these burdens. He knows that rest is good. And as we're resting in the Lord, carrying the burden for the nations, for the generation, for the church, for ministry, as you carry the burden out of it, God is going to bring a revival and the move we will never see and never have seen. In Matthew seventeen fourteen, it says, Narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way, which leads to life. Narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way, which leads leads to life. And I think as we coming, and that, that's like that donkey had to come to the presence of the Lord into that, but the Lord had in that life, uh, how we had to press in. Difficult is the way. Right now, it's not easy for all of us. It's not easy, but it's worth it. It's worth it, I think, when we look back, I think the most difficult situation in your life and in my life make the biggest impact. You don't forget it. You have to make decisions. You have to do things you never thought you're going to do in your life. And God is just going to come and help us to overcome, to be an overcomer and to be what God wants us to be in our life. In Proverbs 28, verse 5, it says, Evil men do not understand justice, but those who seek the Lord understand all. Evil means to distress, misery, injury, sadness, ugliness, unpleasant, wickedness, calamity. Evil men, isn't that um, evil men? So evil comes to emotional negative and mentally negative influence and feelings. Distress, misery, injury, sadness, ugliness, unpleasantness, wickedness. Evil men do not understand justice. And I think today... Well, I was listening because they they are ripping down all the statues in America here, and uh, they're trying to rename things, and they're coming and 
and just breaking down things, some of the things they don't even understand who these guys were. They even threatened to break, to rip down statues of Jesus and break the windows of, uh, in the churches. And so because of it, because the, some of them, they are saying they're against slavery, but they're ripping down the statue of Lincoln, they're ripping down the statue of Washington, they're ripping actually statues of people uh, of, of the liberation of uh, the slavery. They have no understanding. And you know, as I, what I started to do, uh, the only thing I don't know much about the history history of America, but I, I only thing I learned about America is the history is when I became American citizen, you had to uh, make a, do an exam uh, to, to become an American citizen. But since all these things happen and they want to wipe out history, but what America was and what America is, as they're trying to wipe out history, I have started to listen to uh, some of these historian, Christian historian, who are speaking upon these men who have formed and, and grounded, formed uh, America, and the, the, who have, the people, how the uh, American flag came, and the, the national hymns, and all these things, how America was formed, and I realized what they're fighting is not just a system, but they're fighting, when you look at the foundation of America, is men who knew justice because they were not evil. They were men who looked for goodness and men who trying to bring forth something in, in this nation and they want to break down everything. So I believe today as God is raising up men and women with new voices, to speak because some of these kids they can don't know anything they just stimulated with hate and anger and they come against that to uproot a whole nation and the whole world and the global system is behind it so i realize <coughs> that in these days we need men and women to give counsel to give instruction to know the ways of the lord who will know the times and the seasons. And I think, I said, Lord, I'm praying every day, walking, praying, in bed we pray, to know our directions, what the Lord wants us to say, what the Lord wants us to do. And I realize one thing is for sure, the only way we do know the times and the seasons is when we're believing to carry the burdens, the burdens of the Lord, not the burden for our own ministry, but the burden for the nation, what God wants to do in the nation to understand the times and the season. Listen, you're born for such a time as this. God knew, doesn't matter what you go through, there's a key to unlock destiny and purpose. And I think the greatest thing is when we didn't miss it, when we did not just stay in our homes and wait for the things to pass. Remember, Jesus came skipping over the mountain, skipping through the valleys. Oh, he didn't skip through the valleys. He skipped over the valleys. And he comes to the bride and he says, open my love, my fair one, and come away. And he didn't go into her house. He waited her for her to come out to understand the purpose and destiny for the bride or what God has called us to do. You know, when you drive and you see all these huge churches and there's not one person in, say, God, what are you saying in this day? And the Lord is going to call us together again because on a, in agreement there is power. And God is going to birth an agreement and a cry in our hearts where we cry like a deer for the fresh water. And I just thank the Lord for his church. I thank you for you, 
who you are and what you are, you are always in our hearts because there's so many of you who truly are friends and we love you so much. And before I close, I just want to pray. I believe God wants to encourage your heart and strengthen your heart to give you new hope because God wants you to understand that he is you going to be a man and a woman who will know the times and the season for such a time as this. So Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for his church. I thank you for every man, for every woman, for the ministry team, for the worship team, for everyone who is involved. Lord, I thank you for their lives. And Lord, you know all the struggles, the separation, the isolation, Lord, in all these things, you have given us new priorities. You have given us longings and yearnings in our heart we never even knew we had. Lord, you've given us a cry within our heart, like the cry of the children of Israel, that delivery might be born in nations and in generations. Lord, we know that the kingdom of God will stand no matter how evil the times are. Lord, we know that we can walk in purity and in holiness in these days, not because of our striving, but because of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, which is more powerful than anything in our life, who washes us from all the evil, who washes us from all our fear, who washes us from all our doubts, oh God, and that you're going to use us in this day. I thank you, Lord, that you have, what you have done in Simon and Cheslin, what you have done with all the pastors, oh Lord, from his church, what you have done with the families, how you have spoken, how we had to confront things, Lord. I thank you for South Africa. We would not be the same people without South Africa. And we ask you, God, that you bless South Africa in these days. Lord, I pray for President Ramaphosa. I pray, oh God, for the men who don't know which way is up and down, that they will be enlightened, O oh Lord, because you are going to have people who will know what is right and wrong because you bring forth righteousness to your church. I thank you for the anointing which will break every yoke. I thank you today, O oh God, that you're going to encourage us to run the race and not to give up because truly you are greater within us than he who is in the world. So bless his church, I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We loved having you. Don't forget to follow us if you haven't already on social media, and we'll see you next week. Have a great week.